you know, I think all chip shortages aren't created equal. It's, it's, there's this dichotomy, right? Because we're talking to automakers and EV makers and they are complaining and warning um, the, the, the analysts about chip shortages. But in the same vein, we're seeing potentially a 3 million unit market here in China. So it's not affecting everyone the same way. I think that um, the legacies, because their volumes are much higher from a, from a manufacturing standpoint, are probably affected a bit more than, say, a NEO or, or a Tesla. But, you know, I think they also are EV first companies. And so their supply chain management teams, their purchasing teams, they, they know, I think, how to manage chips as a commodity better than some of the legacy automakers. But when you see a shortage of a commodity, last this long, barring COVID, barring any, you know, uh, natural disasters, it's actually not a sh shortage, right? It's, it's a capacity issue. And so the capacity issue is going to last two to three years until more capacity is added into the system. And that's why you're seeing this warning from a lot of automakers that it could last well into 2022, this chip shortage, but it's not actually a shortage. It's a capacity um, uh, issue. So notable distinction. Um, lastly, um, can you help us put China's EV ambitions into context with its broader policy ambitions? We've heard a ton out of Beijing in the last weeks with regards to its regulatory crackdown and its focus on common prosperity. Uh, where, do, where does the EV sector fit in? So the EV sector is a lot different than all these other sectors that have been cracked down upon recently because it's it's a key manufacturing sector, right? It's a key engine for jobs and security. And so although there was some alarm at the beginning of the year because of this huge increase in a short period of time of sales, and that's where you saw Tesla um, being banned from military complexes, right? But, you know, from a, from a the standpoint of national security and data security, that's not a Tesla issue. That's a smart EV issue, right? And I think as long as the data uh, privacy and the national security issues are taken care of, the, the EV sector is going to be growing here. And we've already seen that the NEOs, the Xpons, the Autos, the BYDs have global ambitions because they've already shipped product into the EU, right? So Norway, I think the take rate for NEVs or EVs is about 75%. And so there's a ton of EVs already being sold in the EU and in Norway. And I think prior to the Trump administration, adding a 27.5% tariff into uh, for cars exported into the United or imported into the United States, right. the Chinese EV makers ambitions were the US. But but because of that tariff, the EU had to take its place.